Can you hear me over there? I do, but I do very much uh, Mr. Stalin can hear you. Very good. Uh, DJ, I guess we can get underway now. Um, colleagues, thank you very much. We are going to have a briefing by the Minister of Human Settlements, um, Water and Sanitation. Um, Honorable Lindy Wessisulu. Um, obviously, uh, it, she's got a whole team uh, with her here in Cape Town, but we also are supported by um, another full team in, 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 in Pretoria, led by the acting DG of Water and Sanitation, um, as well as other officials. Um, so what we are looking at today is a briefing around the issues of the drought. Uh, but Minister will articulate on that and also give space to um, the DG and the other officials to make input and then we can take questions. Minister has got to go into the house at some point, so we'll try and be uh, as quick as we can, Minister, so that we can be able to uh, assist you with your time management. Um, DG, if you allow, maybe we can allow Minister to to, to kick off the, 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 the briefing from where we are. He can't speak. He can't speak. Yeah. DG can't speak. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, um, ladies and gentlemen of the media, uh, last week uh, we met at the CSIR and uh, most of you were represented there in one form and we launched our master plan for water and sanitation. We concentrated on, on the water part of the master plan, and we will be dealing with the sanitation part of our master plan perhaps early next year. And the reason why we concentrated on the water uh, section of the master plan is because, as you can see, we have a clear and present problem with the fact that the rains have come in, are going to come in late, and right now, parts of the country are um, technically uh, in a drought situation. Some of them have already been uh, declared uh, uh, as drought areas, and some of them we are still dealing with them. Uh, the uh, departments of water and sanitation and uh, COCTA and other relevant uh, departments like uh, agriculture had um, a, a MINMAC, technical MINMAC, to deal with those matters that are pertinent to how we deal with the, the drought situation. But uh, we are in an in a unfortunate situation and uh, we have to uh, deal with it um, uh, very expeditiously. So today we brought you, uh, we called on, on you so that we can unveil our plan of action, which is the first phase, our plan of action after the master plan, concentrating on how we deal with the drought. And I'd like to thank you for responding to this uh, invitation. And as the spokesperson has indicated, because I have to be in the house, by the time that we are answering some of the questions, uh, those questions will be answered by the people who are over in Pretoria there and some of the people that I have with me here. And I'd like to introduce the people that I have with me here. You know Sputnik, he is our spokesperson. Uh, uh, at, at some point he takes over running of the ENCA and all other, and all other television stations, uh, but when he's not masquerading uh, in that capacity, he's my spokesperson. Next to me is the acting DG of Human Settlements, uh, and as you know that this is part of my responsibility, and he also participates in the MinMax because uh, he's mayor of uh, Makanda. Uh, he actually was the youngest mayor of, uh, in the country and he caused quite a stir because his uh, approach to things was quite radical. But I'm glad that uh, we've caught up with him. He understands the space that we're dealing with and he's able to uh, assist us understand how municipalities work. Our responsibility as a national uh, department is the responsibility of making sure that we are able to secure water enough for everybody and deal with all the major uh, responsibilities that relate to that. However, the articulation of water from source to the individual households is the responsibility of municipalities, and uh, this is why we are experiencing the prolonged uh, turnaround uh, strategies that uh, we have right now. 
that we, we have right now in dealing with this because the people who actually are uh, providing the, the frontline support are municipalities. Uh, the prevailing drought conditions and water distribution uncertainty has necessitated that we convene, as we as I've indicated. I wish to express my gratitude again to especially those who are out in uh, Pretoria there who are not with us here for uh, coming here because we would like you to assist us communicate some of the issues that we are going to be dealing with and especially how we're going to resolve some of the problems that we are experiencing. Doubt is a natural phenomenon. It is a it is normal recurrence, a recurring feature of uh, climate arising from the deficiency in precipitation uh, uh, over an extended period of time, usually a season or more. South Africa and the region uh, uh, in, is affected, uh, is impacted nev negatively by the less than wo world average rainfall that it receives. We uh, emphasize this in our master plan uh, last week. To a large extent, this causes immeasurable strain on the delivery of water services to the populace due to the less than reliable rainfall, not forgetting the Im impact, important impact of climate change resulting in abnormal climatic conditions. The first time we uh, engaged with the society uh, through yourselves, the media, we indicated to them that we are experiencing late rainfalls. We're expecting rainfalls in the late December, and because of that, we called on the people of South Africa to use the water sparingly because we knew that we had to carry the water uh, further than we normally would because of the late, uh, the, the late rainfalls that we're going to experience. The recent drought, the worst for many decades, has also not helped the situation as we can see very negative impact in the country's uh, economy, especially on the agricultural sector, affecting food security and exports, and ex especially affecting um, uh, wi our wildlife and uh, uh, some of our um, uh, uh, cattle and uh, whatever it is that we have in our agricultural sector. As a water and sanitation sector, we need to look at ways of providing services that are our, that we are responsible for. Recent droughts that devastated most parts of the country has highlighted the need for an elaborate facility that can be applied consistently to guide management of water supply and mitigation against risk due to drought. This, also, it, this is also to facilitate equitable water supply under normal conditions while mitigating vul vulnerability by improving preparedness to cope with drought conditions such as we are undergoing right now. We have uh, to be cognizant of the fact that no economy or community can thrive without good, toxic-free, reliable, secure water services. That's what we're responsible for, which is the bedrock of any livelihood. It is for this reason that we've always maintained that water should be everyone's business. South Africa remains a water-scarce uh, country and water-wasting country as well. Water availability endangered by, amongst other factors, uh, recurrent droughts driven by the climatic variation, inequalities in access of water. I want to un underline that. Inequalities that continue in access to water and sanitation and deteriorating water quality. And a very short supply and availability of skilled water engineers, scientists, hydrologists, geologists, and resource economists, etc. All of those skills which we need very badly to maintain the quality of water that we should have. Therefore, a social compact that seeks to build a critical mass of skills in the water sector will be facilitated as soon as possible. We need these skills. Drought is not purely a physical phenomenon that can be defined uh, by the weather, but the result but result uh, when demands of water exceed the availability of water. It can also be caused by a change in water quality as that, um, de as that decreases the supply of usable water. There are different types of drought that can happen. There's a meteorological drought, an agricultural and hydrological and socioeconomic drought. While it is not necessary to delve into the deep casual uh, effects of each type of drought, it should be abundantly clear that it places a strain on both human and life and economic value chain. That's clear to everybody as we sit here right now. 
the recent drought since 2014, which has been carrying on since 2014, that devastated most of the parts of the country, has highlighted the need for a more elaborate facility that can be applied to consistently guide management of water supply and mitigation against risks uh, due to drought. This is also to facilitate equitable water supply under normal conditions while mitigating vulnerability by improving preparedness to cope with drought conditions. However, the best way to mitigate our vulnerability is to save and preserve the little available resources that we have. We want to thank the media at this point for continuing that message consistently after we set it out at the first time. We need to save water. We are a water scarce country. The major question we have to answer is, in case of any form of drought, what do we do? This is the point at which we are right now. All of us use, uh, as water users and uh, the public at large need to evaluate our performance and, as important, adjust our own behavior and, and, mental, and mentality towards water. Some of the tools we need to uh, look into include the revitalization of the blue-green and uh, no-drop monitoring programs, which will start with effect from the 1st of February 2020, if I'm, I'm not mistaken, uh, and other monitoring programs that go with it, ensuring regular reporting on the performance of individual municipalities in their delivery of safe, safe water and sanitation services as well as their reduction of losses in the water supply systems that they are responsible for. We need to encourage municipalities that have set targets to restrict their water use and to use and to publicize their results on a regular basis, regular meaning monthly basis. This will help to make water users more conscious of the supply uh, challenges that we face We can now con uh, and how we can contribute uh, whether we are being successful in this uh, or not, it would be evident as we announce the results on a monthly basis. We cannot afford to ignore the impact of climate change, of growing populations, and changing economic activities. We cannot ignore either the fact that we are now intending to ensure that a large part of uh, the land that we are reclaiming will be given back to uh, African farmers and ensure that they are involved in productive work. The master plan that we launched last week serves as a plan to ensure uh, security of water supply in the entire country. We have to continue to undertake hydrological monitoring. This will improve the resilience and sustainability of available resources in the face of increasing climate variability and change. Uh, we need to refurbish and expand network of gauging stations on which this activity depends on, that is, re-establish and expand the routine monitoring of water resource supply and quality. Uh, this, uh, later on, my team out in Pretoria will be able to indicate to you how we intend to ensure that we monitor our water resources on a regular basis uh, through a, uh, we said it wasn't going to be a wrong war room, a monitoring, a monitoring room out in Gauteng. We can all attest to the fact that the effects of drought are always felt in a number of factors including hunger, famine, thirst, disease, wildfires, social conflict, war, migration and relocation. Unlike in the relatively finite water resources of South Africa, usage is still growing. Uh, thus, the expectation is that the means that this means strain, especially during drought, and likely to intensify uh, on the resource. This is what we're going to do to mitigate uh, the effects of the drought that we have uh, declared in various parts of the country. When we're going to implement uh, drought operating rules, Two, we're going to institute borehole drilling and rehabilitation of boreholes. Three, we're going to uh, make sure that we have government-owned water tankering services available. Th four, we're going to make sure that rain and water harvesting and innovation attached to that is given the green light and is supported. We're going to make sure that we are going to uh, um, support um, the drilling of water from sand in, in the river, which has been, which is, uh, 
brought about a great deal of relief, especially in Butterworth, that will be supported. We're going to ensure the protection and use of springs. We are going to make sure that we have uh, cloud seeding and we're going to have uh, uh, evaporation suppression. We're going to have desalination of brackish groundwater or seawater. And we're going to have effluent treatment, reuse, etc. These are just but a few of the things that we're going to put into effect almost immediately. In the long term, we will implement measures to en enhance water security against drought, and these will include water storage and transfer uh, developments, water infrastructure like dams and conveyances and pipelines that, that are developed uh, to redirect and redistribute water over time and space. We're going to review and promulgate restrictions within the legislation to restore, restore and protect ecological infrastructure. We're going to develop and integrate other sources of groundwater desalination where that is possible with the proper uh, equipment and uh, the right place to desalinate from. We're going to make sure that uh, surface uh, systems also in, are enhanced for water security. As we all know that desalination remains an expensive form of water security and only the coastal provinces will be able to benefit from desalination. We have had our attempt at desalination in the Western Cape and this did not succeed for various reasons that we can get into when we do an answer and um, answer question um, session. We at this point sought the uh, advice of the World Bank and the World Bank indicated to us that for the purpose that we wanted to use desalination and the place that we chose to desalinate was not uh, useful for us and therefore we dropped that particular scheme. Other long-term measures to mitigate drought include monitoring systems, enabling policies, working maintenance and etc. And as mentioned from time to time over the years, South Africa still has a higher water consumption per capita than the world average and we've got to deal with that and we've got to keep on sending a message to our people that we cannot afford to waste the water in the way that we do. To balance requirements and supply, South Africa will need to re reduce water demand as well as increase supply for a growing population and economy in order to ensure that water security by 2030 is in line with what the NDP has um, put in, as has indicated it should be. This will be done, as, as we've indicated, by changing behavioral environment. And the media is invited here, please, to assist us to constantly educate our people so that we can change behavior and make sure that we can preserve the water that we have. We need to develop and, impl and implement water conservation and water demand strategies in all water sections. This will be done through public-private growth um, initiative projects. We also need to reduce average domestic consumption to 175 litres per person per day. And I think this is the normal uh, international average of 175. Uh, I think in, in, in conditions of drought, we might want to take this lower, but right now, this is what we are wanting to implement, 175 litres per day per person. We need to op optimize the water mix, which is currently strongly dominated by surface water. This will be done in, by increasing some groundwater use, like the reuse of effluent from waste water treatment plants and water reclamation, as well as desalination and mine drainage and other, and other um, ways that we have already mentioned. A very critical factor in reducing non-revenue water and water losses in all water service authorities to 15% below business as, uh, as usual. This is a very critical one and uh, uh, I will leave my um, officials to explain to you how we hope to do this. The new normal will and must include the use of technology in our very important agricultural sector. When we had um, uh, when we were launching the master plan, we had the chairperson of the black agricultural sector uh, and uh, she was complaining very bitterly that when we talk about water and providing support to farmers, we very often forget that black uh, farmers are very much in need of, of uh, some of the help that uh, government uh, is providing and even more because they are just starting off uh, as black farmers. 
So we will, we will make sure that we prioritize those most in need. I'm encouraged by the interest of this, uh, of this sector uh, to find not just new ways of doing things, but also being participants in finding lasting solutions to the issues of water scarcity. We must consider our use uh, with my, with uh, our use with our mind on the sustainability of resources for our future generations, our children and our children's dependence on uh, on this generation uh, depends on this generation to do the right thing. Use water sparingly, water wisely, to assure and ensure water security for the future. We will continue to be stringent in the application of the law and prescripts of the water use licenses as issued across the board because anything less will be tantamount to a dereliction of, the responsi of our responsibility. This will lead to a great loss of social capital where stakeholders and government are in sound partnership in each and every community. We will continue the critical uh, joint effort and cooperation with departments of agriculture rural development and land reform, with COPTA, with finance together with our entities and water boards and irrigation boards and MISA and SALGA and so forth to ensure that all round compliance and support to one another brings out the best in each one of us. We have a number of uh, provinces that are under stress and I'll briefly uh, go over these so that you have some understanding. The department has assessed drought conditions in each province uh, around the country and came up with a number of short and medium and long-term interventions in these areas. The department also considered also consider the level of groundwater in each of the affected areas within our province, within each province that we have assessed. The interventions are grouped based on specific themes. Some of these interventions are already, uh, uh, have already been implemented. One in the Eastern Cape province, there are dams that are below 10% of water, and these dams have been categorized as critical. There are drought relief programs that are being implemented in the province. Um, last week, we uh, happened to uh, be required to intervene in a serious matter of the people of uh, Butterworth uh, who, had, who were under a great deal of stress. Uh, and when we went there, uh, we realized that actually this is something we should have done a little earlier because the scarcity of water in But Butterworth is, uh, is below what we should, be, um, we should have at this, at this time of year. In the, further in the Eastern Cape, um, we have uh, Makanda, and to the west of Makanda, we're going to augment the water from boreholes that will be feeding uh, Makanda. As you know, earlier on uh, uh, this year, uh, we had a crisis in Makanda, and it threatened the, um, the seasonal um, festival that goes to uh, Makanda, and we had to call in urgent help. And we've got boreholes there. Our in intention is to ensure that we increase the water in the boreholes, or we increase the boreholes. In the Free State Province, uh, we have 20 dams, and only one dam is in a critical situation there. Boreholes were drilled, and in Mangaung Municipality, we have 26 of these boreholes, and they are fully equipped, and we are hoping that this will take us through the drought. In Wazulu Natal Province, there is no dam that is in a critical state, but there are over 200 areas that have been affected by the drought conditions uh, that we are in right now. In Limpopo, there are five dams that are in a critical state. The Oliphants River uh, Water Development Project will bring water from Flag Boshiero Dam to Mohala uh, in, in order to assist us with uh, this problem in Limpopo. In, Puma, in the Mpumalanga province, there are 10 dams that are below 10% of water, and these dams are categorized as dams in a critical state. And this is what my officials will explain to you what it is that we're doing about each one of these provinces that we've outlined, which have a critical uh, level of water supply. In most parts of the Northern Cape province, we rely on groundwater, and in the Northwest province, we have 28 dams 
and three of these dams are in a critical state. In the Western Cape province, there are about 40 areas affected by drought. Some dams in the province are in a critical state and uh, we are doing something about that as well. Provinces and municipalities should continue their uh, water conservation inter interventions and in particular talking about municipalities in assessing uh, the situation that we're in now, we have discovered that our municipalities are not always in a position, do not have necessary capacity to deal with what they need to deal with, which is provide uh, water, reticulate the water, and make sure that our citizens have water at hand. We are therefore working together with SALGA, going to assist those municipalities in distress in various ways, as we've outlined here, and uh, make sure that we are able to get over this particular period that we have. I'm glad to announce at this point that uh, the Lesotho Highlands uh, project, uh, which had closed off uh, the water for maintenance for over two periods, has now opened up the tunnel. The tunnel started running at the end of last month, and uh, we expect that by the end of this week, it will be flowing into the Val River, which uh, supplies water to four provinces. That will come as a great relief to us, but it was necessary for us to close, um, to close off the tunnel because every 10 years we are required to do maintenance work. That caused us a great deal of uh, difficulty, but uh, that is behind us now. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to end here and um, so that we are able to deal with uh, some of the issues uh, that uh, the, uh, the officials will be dealing with while I run off to make sure that I press my button on the right place to ensure that we have the resources that we need in this country. In closing, we'll be using various technologies in combination with current strategies as we've outlined in our master plan last week. We're working together with Rand Water, which gives us a specialized um, product, uh, providing new technologies that will help us ensure security of water supply and also track water supply. At uh, the Water Rand, uh, at the Rand Water, we expect that we will be establishing our um, our uh, our national offices to ensure that we are able to monitor our water. During the launch of the master plan in the CSIR, we saw a number of uh, new technologies that were being displayed in the exhibition, and we believe th that these are very important uh, um, steps in our in finding innovative methods of augmenting the water that we have. And as we went around, we were very impressed with the level of technology that South Africans have taken on. We will be using some of these technologies to ensure that we are able to provide those, those areas in distress with, with uh, sufficient water. However, when it comes to short-term intervention, restriction rules have proven to work best, and as it is, responds by reducing de uh, uh, depletion of strained resources. Quick water mix installations like groundwater and tankering are not best as much as uh, they are the preferred by local municipalities. Uh, the officials will indicate to you why we think they are not the ne necessarily the best uh, option. This is because they are also affected by drought conditions. Where they get the water is affected by drought conditions, but there are also other matters that we are trying to cut down on where we have. Uh, officials who are working for government running tankers for government and charging for water. In KZN, for example, during the 2015 drought, it was reported that about 40% of the boreholes drilled dried within the first week or so after insulation. Uh, this has also happened in various parts of the Eastern Cape where we've had assistance and we've d um, dug um, boreholes. Very soon thereafter, the water has uh, been used up. Ladies and gentlemen, I think at this point it is uh, wise for me to say that uh, uh, we are going to ensure that the water tariff policy that uh, most uh, municipalities are required to adhere to is limited. Uh, it is rigid and it cannot be changed until the next financial year uh, of the respective particular municipalities. However, monitoring and communication can be improved uh, uh, by being more regular 
and this is what we're hoping you're going to do. We're also going to ask our officials to make themselves available to radio stations on a regular basis to send out this message so South Africans get to understand we are living in a drought situation right now. It might not be a full drought, but some provinces have already declared drought, therefore we need to use our water wisely. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, at that point I'd like to end this. Thank you very much for being here. The message we want to send out to our people is we are aware of the, of the distress that is being caused by lack of water. We are working on it and what we've outlined is what we're going to do to make sure that we're providing each one of you with the level of water that you need on a daily basis. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister. And, uh, I would suggest, Minister, maybe before you leave, there could be particular questions that the media would okay. like to address to you directly okay. before we, we then uh, are left with uh, uh, the officials for, for them to take the, 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 the rest of the matters. Shall we have the first round very quickly? I've got one. Is it only one question? Anyone in Victoria? There is one in Pretoria that I see. Okay, shall we take these two first? Thank you, Minister. Let me answer from the sister. Are there any areas where there are no solutions? No. There's no groundwater, water can't be transferred, and people will just have no water? No. There aren't, there, are no, there aren't any on our radar screen where it is not possible for us to uh, put out um, the necessary uh, supply of water. As I indicated, when we had the master plan launch last week, we had an exhibition of innovations by South Africans on how we can harvest water from fog, on how we can harvest water from sand, and various other ways in which it is possible for us to provide that particular water. So where there is no river, there are no boreholes, we have innovation that we're able to utilize. So to the extent that it is possible for us, with the resources that we have, we would like to assure everybody that we will have enough water within the limits per day per person uh, to last us through <coughs> the summer and until the rains come. And uh, what we will be doing between now and when the rains come is to put together the construction unit that we have, supported by those students that we had uh, trained for the water leaks and the National Rapid Response Team to ensure that we can clean out the dams. Some of our dams are full of silt, which is sand, and by the time the water, by the time we have the rains, that silt will act as a sponge and take up most of the water. So we will be spending a lot of our time cleaning out some of the dams that uh, need cleaning out. But uh, we can assure our people that we are working round the clock to provide them with the necessary minimum water that they require. Um, the department has previously said that it will be looking at sections of the National Environmental Management Act to declare some areas of the country as sort of strategic water resource areas. Um, what progress um, is, 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 is that kind of process in? And are you able to tell us which, which areas specifically uh, you're looking at for your purpose? Right. Okay. That question I'd like to refer to our officials as I indicated to you they spent two days at a MINMAC <coughs> and that MINMAC involved COCTA, our department and uh, uh, agriculture department, uh, land and agriculture department and environmental affairs so that they are in a better position to give the report, give the report of that particular MINMAC which would have touched on the area that you're talking about now. Uh, with your permission, I will refer that to the officials who will come in after I have left this place. Is that okay for you? Is that okay for you? The, the gentleman who asked the question. Uh, okay. Yeah. I think this is okay, Minister. Shall we, do we have any other questions for the Minister before she departs and then we can... Kululego, can, can you nod that it's okay for you? Yes, Minister Nodi. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, for yes. um, the, apart from your, your budget 
that you've been allocated in the next financial year, are you going to be needing more? Are you are asking Treasury for a bigger budget? You know that um, my relationship with the Minister of Finance is a very special relationship. He sits right next to me in Parliament, and I wouldn't want to uh, spoil that relationship. Uh, so we will pass that matter of finances to the officials who don't sit anywhere near the minister. Uh, we are going through a stressful time with our finances and therefore we are required to cut back on most of the things that we're doing. So within the means that, that are, are possible, we would like to remain within a schedule. Uh, there is money that is allocated for, uh, for drought conditions as it is an, in an inevitable uh, situation and the DG who is sitting in uh, Pretoria will be able to indicate whether or not we have any uh, drought money uh, uh, passed on to us. When we do have money passed on to us um, by the Treasury, I would like to make sure that we, we use it in conjunction with COCTA as opposed to transferring it to COCTA. Any other follow-up in Clinton? None in Pretoria. For the minister particularly, we will still take questions for the officials. Or in the Minister of Finance, Minister No, DG, you, when you speak in the, DG, when you speak in that low tone, you're, you're bringing the morale down. We wanted to say to our people, we know there's a drought and we're dealing with it to give them hope. We are there for them. We'll do everything possible to make their lives bearable throughout this drought period. Now, when you come in on a monotone, you are now lowering the standards. Uh, we've been joined by the CEO of the uh, He's going to talk to us about one type tool that we're not going to develop for us and the operations room that the minister is talking about. But the rest of the questions we will end up in the room. Thanks, Kuti. Thanks, Kuti. Uh, minister, shall we? Close. Ask you to take leave of us. No, <laughs> I will not leave bef before I've said thank you to everybody. Thank you to the DG, the officials over there, and thank you to my uh, uh, advisors here and uh, members of the NRTT, the two DDGs I have with me here. Uh, we spent a lot of time preparing for this and making sure it can be as concise uh, as possible and uh, it can go out into. Um, our communities and they'll be able to understand. Further, we have also decided that we're going to use our vernacular uh, radio stations. We have allocated uh, the DDG here uh, to the Siswati Likwalakwala radio station. We have allocated uh, the former mayor to um, the Eastern Cape Club um, Oenene and uh, the Western Cape. We've allocated Yegan to the English and, and, and also um, uh, African-speaking media. We have allocated uh, most of the of officials there uh, with their language specialities. We've asked them, please, to be on radio to make sure that they translate this into the language that can be understood by everybody and they can understand their people who are concerned about the drought. We're working on it, and there is hope. We've got solutions for them. Thank you. And thank you to the media for being here. Thank you, Minister. Thank you. Um, DG is available and uh, other officials who can be able to take other questions if they are there, uh, the media will indicate to us. Any questions? Yes, DG. Number of the responses, number of the on 
these processes.